Rock and Royal, uh, uh, Rock and Navy, uh, uh, know y'all with me, uh, uh, let's get it, baby, uh, Rock and Royal, uh, Rock and Navy, uh, know you with me. Rock and Royal Soccer Show Game One Recap. Really quick postcast here with my co-host Carlos Simpson Haslam. She just called the game on Big Twelve Now on ESPN Plus. Uh, number three, I guess we have to use rankings. So number three, BYU one. Number nineteen, Wisconsin nil. A nail biter in this one, but BYU somehow comes up with a win, comes out with a win. Seventh straight season opening win dating back to 2017 for this Cougar team I'm not sure a lot of people expected this victory but Carla thanks for joining me what's your biggest takeaway from this one I mean I think the biggest takeaway is that there are a lot of ways to win games <laughs> and sometimes it's not because you outshoot your opponent sometimes it's not because you outpossess your opponent yeah. sometimes it's because you get one good break and you have an alley fryer that is able to put that one good break away uh, I mean, you give credit to, you know, Lynette Hernandez stopped a penalty kick, too. Yep. So that definitely changed this game. That helps. But this is a weird one, I will say. Uh, if you're a BYU fan, you're happy that they got the win. But there are still many question marks, I think, left on this team. And, I mean, stay optimistic. A win is a win. Uh, but I think there's still a lot of questions about where the goals are going to come from and if BYU can continue to hold, especially now that they're going to go on the road for three games, two of which are against ranked opponents. Yep. Yep. Uh, well, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Wisconsin really came in this one and kind of – uh, took BYU to the kitchen, I guess. They banged them around in a lot of ways, r rustling the pots and pans and whatnot. But BYU responds with the fryer pan. I mean, the frying pan. Um, I see what you did there, Yeah, John. sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. That was really, really bad. That was a <laughs> terrible pun. Um, but Badgers out to BYU 17-7. to Six shots on target. Uh, that's probably going to be a talking point for the Badgers coaching staff. Only six of those shots. You got to... I, I get you got to put... You got to put up a shot in order to score. But you probably want some slightly better um, angles that I think Wisconsin had to this one. Just six or 17 shots on target. They did hold BYU to just three shots on goal, uh, which they may feel good about, but all that really matters is if you finish them or not. BYU finished one of their three chances. A really nice link-up play between um, Aaron Bailey and Ali Fryer in particular. I think Addie Gardner had the yes. pass before the pass in a lot of ways. Um, and that, that pass, actually, is maybe where we should start on this goal in some ways. Because I'm not sure if Addie's going to necessarily get the credit she deserves with it. But Wisconsin came out in the first 10 to 15 minutes of this game, really dominated possession, dominated plays, pushed a lot of numbers forward, really controlled that midfield. Um, and Addie gets the ball and takes and, and just takes it out. One of the few chances that BYU's midfield, I think, took the ball out of it and got it up front to the forwards, Aaron Bailey and Ali Pryor, then did the rest. But I feel like that entire sequence probably deserves a little bit of, of, of reaction kind of breakdown. What did what did you see, at a, I guess, as you were calling it, Carla? Yeah, I see it coming from a high press from Addie Gardner. Uh, she wins it as, a, as she's playing in a forward position, but she wins it almost as if she's playing a defender. She tracks back and then from there is able to dispossess Wisconsin. And it's that dispossession that then allows her to turn around, around the midfield stripe, connect with Aaron Bailey, whose first touch is forward. It's mm -hmm. a front forward touch, mm -hmm. and that's important because Aaron Bailey is originally facing back when she receives it. And for those who have been watching the game, you recognize that being able to turn your hips forward is a huge part of that momentum. And for the soccer student of the game, it may not be something that you recognize as easily. But that front forward foot is then what allows her to take that one step and then get the nutmeg to split the curtains and find Allie Fryer. Um, Wisconsin held pretty steady on their defensive line, but because of that dispossession coming from Gardner, they were slightly had a numbers game off. Uh, I think they were expecting to move forward, and so most of their midfield line had already gone into BYU's defensive half. And that's what allowed Allie Fryer a little bit of space. And then Fryer doing what Fryer does best, she gets the ball, and then with one explosive step, just steps in front of her defender. She plays a very different style of soccer to that of Aaron Bailey, who likes, you know, to have the shifty footwork. Fryer is just power. It's just go, take one explosive step forward, and then just hits it like a rocket into the back of the net, uh, past Stover. And so, ultimately, it's a very direct play, but it comes simply because Gardner was willing to make the defensive pressure and add the defensive run to win the ball back. 100%. And then in the second half, Wisconsin rounds out the, their offense a little bit more. They start pressing over and over again. I'd be surprised if BYU had more than 30% of possession through the entire second half. Uh, but maybe the biggest moment, um, Wisconsin awarded a penalty kick for a handball in the box. Another Nez steps up, 
just makes the right read at the right time, lower left corner-ish, I guess, um, and stops a penalty kick, which ultimately I think was probably the deciding factor. What you see on that play? Yeah, I think there's multiple things that happen. Uh, like I said, I never want to cut away from Hernandez's credit and that she did make a save, and when you're a goalkeeper, the, you have the, you're at the disadvantage. The advantage always goes to the PK shooter because they can hit the ball at a much faster rate than you can react. Yep. Uh, so I, I don't want to cut Hernandez any short uh, from what she did. That being said, um, it was not a great placed PK. There was not a ton of power on it, and it wasn't to the corners. And so Hernandez guesses right, and she's able to get a paw on it. I do think Hernandez does a good job of parrying it out of bounds. A lot of goalkeepers on saves like that will just send it right back to the shooter, and the shooter is then able to have a second chance. And so Hernandez does a good job of moving it away from her box. But you're right, that's ultimately that's what keeps you know the donut on the board for BYU is the fact that Hernandez is able to step up and make a big save. And I found it interesting in her post-game interview, you know, Jason Shepard, who is our sideline reporter on ESPN+, Plus, asked her to kind of go through it, and she said her job was just to calm down and slow the play. And that's exactly what happened, and she's right. As yeah. a goalkeeper, again, there's not much you can do when you're on the line for a penalty kick. Your job is to try to slow everything down, and that's exactly what happened. Quite literally, the shot yep. was slow. And part of that may be that there was just a suck in the energy uh, and you give Hernandez a lot of credit for doing that. Yeah, and she did a lot of things that a veteran goalkeeper does in that situation. She kind of slowly got back to her line. She just, you obviously can't take too long or the rest going to card you or caution you. But she sort of slowly got back to her line. She made herself really big right before she stepped back on the line, which again bought that extra two or three seconds. I think that might have thrown the timing off a little bit. Um, and then ultimately a lot of PK saves are partially guessing games. So she saw at the last minute the... Um, and you have to she, guess yeah, she saw Yeah, she saw the hips turn, and, and the ball was coming to her left, so she's just in the right position to, to pod and push it out of bounds. Uh, so definitely credit to Lynette Hernandez. She finishes the night with six saves on the evening. Including That's a career high a, yeah, for Hernandez. Career high six saves, um, including that penalty, none bigger than that. This is the last home game, first home game and last home game for a couple of weeks now. BYU hitting the road for a three-game road trip. At number 12, St. Louis, at Long Beach State, Big West favorites, I think, Long Beach State, and then at number 11, UCLA. But the first one's always the biggest one. How much confidence can this result, deserved or not? We can talk all we want. Uh, soccer can be a weird game. Some wins are more deserved than others. But the result, just the result, how much confidence can give this BYU team as they had out on the road for three straight now? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think of my time when I was playing on the team, you take every win as a confidence booster because... No win is ever guaranteed. And so as a result, you, you have to celebrate every single victory, and you have to build on it, and you have to use it. Unfortunately, it may still be too early to tell. Uh, I, I think this three-game tra- road trip will be very telling for the team. And, and I'm not saying telling end all. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's still preseason. Or I should say it's still pre-conference play, I mean. They'll learn a lot about themselves. But so, they will learn sure. a lot about themselves because I don't know if you can get lucky multiple times. And I'm not inferring that BYU was lucky here. There was a lot of good stuff that happened. But I don't think you're going to be out-possessed by two-thirds, out-shot by two-thirds, right. and win every single game. I just don't think that's going to happen consistently. Um, and, and so we'll see what happens. I mean, and, and these are, like, great teams. I mean, the Billikens are so fun to watch. They play such a great style of soccer. I still remember the game that they played here at Southfield one year ago for BYU season opener. They won. That was some of the best soccer that I have seen in a season opener. That was a great game. ever. Yeah, that was a great game. And I remember in that broadcast saying both BYU and St. Louis will go deep in the NCAA tournament. And that was the first game of the season. And I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you, you so. Did kind of, like, you did they, kind they of. They both did yeah. so well. Long Beach State always does so well. I'm a bit surprised Long Beach isn't ranked. I think Long Beach is definitely a, uh underrated team. I don't think they get as much credit as they should, perhaps maybe because their conference isn't as strong. But that team is always so sharp yep. and so technical. Yep. They play very much a South American style of soccer. Their coach is Colombian. And they play very much a Colombian style of soccer that's just, like, beautiful to watch. And then, last of all, not much has to be said for UCLA, who just consistently, coming in at number 11 ranking right now, who consistently just has athletes out on the pitch. And so, yeah, this next three weeks are going to be tough for BYU. Like I said, but you take the victory. And maybe there are things you can draw upon, and maybe there are things that you can implement and use in those three games. Yep. Uh, It's a lot easier to teach moments like that after a win than a loss sometimes. Um, I'm sure there will be a lot of teaching moments from head coach Jennifer Rockwood and her assistant 
coaching staff with this team as they embark on a three-game road trip before coming back here to Provo Southfield. Uh, Saturday, August 31st, 8 p.m. kickoff against in-state rival Utah State. Um, I think that one's also going to be circled on this BYU team's calendar, but not looking ahead, not looking ahead, because there's a very tough three-game road trip before that. Um, Carlos Winston Haslam, you can hear her on ESPN Plus every broadcast. She'll be here pretty much every week this season, guiding BYU fans through the soccer swell. Uh, this is the Rock and Royal Soccer post-game show. Um, we will get you out of here with some post-game thoughts from the goal scorer first, Ali Fryer, uh, Lynette Ernest, the goalkeeper. Again, a career had six saves, including a penalty kick in this 1-0 shutout victory. And then the gaffer, head coach Jennifer Rockwood, to wrap it up. And to wrap up the rest of it, I'm Sean Walker for my co-host, Carlos Winston Hansen, uh, saying see you next time. We just wanted to have a, a lot of energy and, and control what we can control. And that's, that's the effort and the energy. We knew Wisconsin was going to come in and be a good team. Um, I, I feel like we bent, but we didn't break. And, um, you know, we're uh, not used to being on the, on the side of chasing the ball a lot. And, you know, they obviously came out and moved the ball very well against us. And we didn't adjust to it. Um, again, having new players who... Um, have to learn to, to coach each other out on the field. Um, but we had some great performances for Aaron and Allie to combine for that goal and take a, and relief. A little, a lot of pressure that we were under was obviously huge. First goal of the season. Um, you know, Allie, that's what she does. She scores goals. That's why we moved her up top. So, um, and then also Lynette coming through big time. We told Lynette before the season we might have to rely on her uh, more than we did last year. And, and she really rose to the challenge tonight made some unbelievable saves and and um so i'm just really proud um proud of our back line a new back line that was under a lot of pressure a lot of attack um and um i thought you know it's a, it's a good learning experience for us against a really good team the moment ali's ball hits the back of the net i almost saw shoulders like drop like there was this collective sigh of relief that came out mm -hmm. from the team mm -hmm. just how big of a like a tension lifter was yeah. that moment after the exhibition season and yeah. some of those struggles and whatnot. Like, could you almost feel it from the sideline? Um, well, for sure. I mean, we're a team that uh, likes to put two or three goals in the game, and, and you know, we didn't score in the exhibition. So, um, you know, there's that pressure. And um, and just the way we started, we didn't start the game as well as we would have liked, and, and we're sitting on our heels and, and let Wisconsin really kind of do what they wanted uh, for those first 15 minutes. So I, I don't remember what time the goal was scored at, but... It was definitely a big relief uh, for us to kind of break the momentum that Wisconsin had and to try and settle down. I think we were able to shift the momentum after that goal, um, and then they came out as strong as ever in the second half, and we really struggled to, to keep any sort of possession. But we worked hard and um, kept the ball in the back of the net, and you can't ask for much more than that. What's the beauty of the defensive effort when you are facing that kind of pressure? Um, I think we've talked a lot about our individual responsibility and one being defending, and so I think um, you know Tara and Avery did a, and really everyone on the back line uh, did a good job of that. And they had to win balls. Um, they were having balls served all over the place and, and kind of just on our heels a lot. Um, but you know they stood strong and and uh, found a way to win. Sometimes that's what you got to do. You just got to find a way to win. Lots of experiences with this team are going to be new. Going on the road for three games is going to be something new. What do you tell them about this road trip? Um, well, I think we just have to embrace what we were able to do. Again, um, we have a very challenging schedule, and obviously these next three games are, are uh, all against either ranked opponents, and Long Beach is expected to win their conference, and uh, you know, they're always a challenge. So I think it's just learn from this. You know, it's it's more fun to, to learn from a, a win than to learn from a loss. Um, but there's lots of things that we can learn uh, over the next few uh, days before we have to uh, play some this. Can they take a little bit of confidence out of this one? I mean, because yeah. obviously you get the goal and the defense dug in in a lot of ways. It seems like maybe things are working, I guess. Or like oh, what for sure. On yeah, we that. have to embrace uh, what we're able to do tonight, you know. Um, as I mentioned, Wisconsin's a very good team. I think Lynette... It should have been a, a really big confidence booster for her, how she performed. It should be a good confidence booster for Ali, um, you know, putting that goal in. And then just, like you said, a back line. We relied a lot on Micah Komenhoek, who is, uh, just, I thought, played a phenomenal 90 minutes. Um, so lot, lots of good things to take away.
What's it like <laughs> to break the seal and get that first goal? It was just, it was such a great feeling. We had worked so hard as a team during our practices, and I'm sure you saw our games before. So it was nice to just finally get one in the back of a goal, and it just kind of gave us a relief. It's just a little bit of weight off of our shoulders, and you could feel that momentum just shift. How did so it, it happen for you? Like, describe it for us. Oh, uh, for me, making that goal? No, just like the, the sequence. A sequence? Okay. Um, honestly, um, if you were watching the game, we were dropped in on half a lot, and it did, we weren't having a lot of pressure <laughs> on the attack, and finally we got the ball up on a counter, and Aaron Bailey gets the ball, flops it to me, I got a touch, and then after that, I can't really, I don't really remember what happened, but it went in, I just remember screaming, I was screaming so hard, I like lost like my vision, it was just tunnel vision, it was just <laughs> autopilot after that, but it was a great feeling. There, so. There's a good photo that you'll see, that'll show you, oh. of you screaming. <laughs> Okay, oh, I'm, I'm so excited to see that. I'm usually not the most photogenic, but I'm playing soccer, but... The pass by Aaron, though, was a pretty nice setup. It was a little bit going through your mind of, like, don't screw this up, don't screw this up. Um, no, once again, just, like, autopilot in that moment, you kind of... That's when all the hard work pays off. You just... You're in the zone, and that's kind of what I went into the game. I had some cues that I had, and it was like, get in the zone, and that's what I did. I was in the zone, and I got in the back of the net, so... How much immediate relief kind of came off this team with that goal? Because it, it felt like this team played a little bit tight through that exhibition season because of the, the lack of the lack of goals that came with a lot of offense, I guess, in all the ways. It seemed like you guys had, like instantly just relaxed, I guess. Yeah, it, it was immediate. Just as I said, the momentum just shifted, and it finally just, like, all hard work finally paid off. Like, And then now, I think, right after that, we're going to have so many more goals this season. That's not going to be our only one, but... It was a great one to start us off with. So. What was your view of uh, Lynette's penalty save? Oh my gosh, I had so much belief in her. Me and Lynette have been roomies, and I love the girl to death. And I just knew when she's on that line, she knows what she's doing, and she's a freaking beast. And so I honestly didn't have any fear in that moment. So. How much do you look forward to your three-game road trip now? I, I'm so excited. It's it's huge team bonding experience. We haven't traveled as a team yet with all the new girls, but I think it's going to be great to build that chemistry off the field and to show it on. So, can you take a little bit of confidence into it with this result too? Yeah, I think off of a win, we can we know that we can win now, and so it's just go out there and do what we know how to do, and the wins will come. So, well, let's start with the penalty save a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because that's a tough position for a goalkeeper. What's going through your mind a little bit? I saw you sort of uh, get really big right before she stepped up to take it. Is that part of your strategy? And yeah. Just what was kind of, I, I mean, walk me through it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the minute they call the PK, um, you know, in that moment, it's like, okay, well, no going back. There's, almost, I, there's so much I can do. And my goal is to try to slow down the game in my head and just breathe. My biggest thing is, like, I have to breathe, pay attention to her, pay attention to her body. Anything I can do to read which way she's going to go. I just have to do my best. And so going in a PK, I love to just stay big, stay tall, try to stay big. And the minute she's about to take it, get set, and then go for it. Uh, there's only so much I can do in a PK, right? But um, I was able to read it that last second. I saw her hips open up, and I have to give it my all. And I, I gave it my all, and I got my hand on it. And that slow motion when I got my finger on it, I saw it go out, and I just had to, like, celebrate. It was just such a big moment for me. I was screaming. I was like, <gasps> it was awesome. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, defensively, you guys had to come up big because they were putting a lot of pressure on that end. Yeah. What parts of the defense were working well that you were able to keep them out? Yeah, the biggest thing is keeping them wide. Um, when the ball's wide, they have a, a terrible angle for them to shoot. And so every single time, like, I'm yelling at my center backs to make sure they're staying good side with the players just to front them to make sure they're um, pressing them wide. My defender um, giving her praise for keeping the ball wide. And then my, the goal of the, our outside backs is to hold as much as possible until we get our withdrawn to help and double them. And so in those moments, the biggest thing is communication. I have to make sure Avery is in, or whoever is, you know, the near um, center back, to make sure she's not getting sucked out, making sure she's within line with my near post. I'm doing everything I can to make a brick wall in front of me. And so our defense will always say we're the brick wall. Like, we have to protect the ball. And that's what, that's what happened. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Allie's goal, you had a pretty good view of it and whatnot. But when that ball hits the back of the net, it's been a tough exhibition season for you guys and the lack of goals, not from chances, but lack of goals and whatnot. How much just kind of tenseness drops from this team when that goal hits the back of the net? 
I think you can see it throughout the whole entire field. Everyone's screaming. Everyone's jumping. Out. The minute I saw that, I was just jumping in the air, screaming my head off. I knew it was going to happen too. Um, you say we had like a rough preseason, but how I see it, it was such big growth for our team. You know, the first UVU you lost was obviously tough since our, our the school right next door, but in the end, we did a really good job, and then we stepped up the next game, unlucky with Wyoming and that goal. But this game, I I knew, I knew we're gonna come out here, I knew we're gonna win and get that goal, and I, and when that happened, I think that finally, like that big relief and that proudness of like we did it, like we all knew it too. But it was you know, really exciting. Yeah. What kind of confidence can a win over a very good Wisconsin team do for you guys, especially if you go like it's a three game road trip after this? It's a, I think that confidence is gonna help us keep getting those wins. Um, this tonight's win, I think everyone, it, it was a game that proved to us that we are exactly where we need to be. We're doing the right things. It's coming together. We absolutely trust our coaches. We know They know exactly what we need to do. And um, all of our hard work's paying off. So that confidence, I think all those girls, particularly our young girls, are finally realizing, hey, like, it's just, those are just a few thousand fans. <laughs> it's okay. We're here to play soccer. With that boy Cosmo, hey, hey. we grantin' kids wishes like that boy Cosmo. I got you. They steady hating on us, but we who they watch though. The Pac-12 mad, but we still on top, bro. Jaren Harder, Cody X, that's a cool connect. Yeah, my team is kind of old, but it's cool events. I'm hitting too hard, ow, I hurt my neck. Hey, look you good, bro. I'm about to hit up bread. Man, them Utah State Aggies, man, they just some pets. Catching something in Vegas, you can place your bet.